Hello everyone, today we will see the general software interface as well as menu toolbox or toolbar and we will start to design some vertical envelopes. Edificious is the architectural beam design software by Haka Software and with Edificious we can easily model the 3D model of a building, model outdoor space, automatically generate and view detailed work in drawing and construction documents. Edificious is currently one of the leading BIM software solutions certified by Smart Building for IFC Import and Export. But now, let's have a closer look at the software interface. Here on the left we have the file menu, on the central part is the editing and modeling area that adapt in relation to various choices relating to the file menu. At the top right we have various links to our online services. In the middle we have the indispensable videos that will help us to quickly start working with the features and some new forum discussion here at the bottom. Then some important company communications, like for example new release or update. And now let's start with a new document. As you can see, we immediately start off from ground floor level as default level. Let's take a quick look at the interface and start to get familiar with it. At the top we have the program toolbar in which we can find some menus like a file, drawings, tool, windows, service and question marks. Under the drawing menu here we can find the object menus, the properties, visibility and so on. Then we have the tool menu in which we have the level managers, the unit of measurements in which we can define our systems, international or imperial, the units, decimals and separators. Here we have the IFC settings with regard to the files to be exported. And here, the windows related to the software options, we can choose the number of recent documents to be visualized on the home page and the backup folder. Then we have the interface and notification options, like for example the saving warning. Here we have the Windows menu that allows us to tile horizontally or vertically our windows, overlaps and eventually minimize the window. From the service menu we can choose the Edificious VR button. And here at the end we have the question mark from which we can choose to connect with a forum for checking video tutorial, updates and some information as well. But let's come back to the drawing menu. Here on the left we have the project management menu and here we can see the project in which we are working on. Then we have the navigator tree with all the nodes relating to our project management. And on the bottom left we can choose the beam environment in which to work. We have the architectural design environment, the part relating to terrain modeling and landscaping design. The bill of quantity for construction cost estimating and a specific area for launching the various integration process with other ACA software solutions. On the right we have the properties toolbox which is contextualized accordingly to the selected objects. Then we have the vertical toolbox with the copy button that allows us to copy the selected objects from one level to other levels. We have the background that allows us to visualize the object present in other levels and the selection filter that allows us to select objects with similar properties. Now let's have a look at the entities present under the object menu. First of all, we have the architectural category in which we can find the envelopes, the opening and rooms, some ornamental objects, columns and beams, filling and coatings, some other objects like trees, 3D models, cars and elevators, and the installations. A section relating to the drawing models like floor plan, cross section and elevation view. Then we have the 2D graphic section from which we can choose line, polyline on points, magnetic grids, we can choose to insert raster images or 2D blocks, but also measurements, labels, legend and markers. Then this menu allows us to modify the magnetic grids and here at the bottom we have the level management. To insert an object, select it from the menu. In this case we will start by inserting a vertical envelope. Here on the right panel we can see all the properties of the object. The building envelope is inserted with two clicks. With the first we can set the start point, then rotate to set a direction and with the second click we will define the end point. 
Now let's analyze this object properties. In order to arrange the windows, we need to press in our keyboard Alt plus F2. Now we can check our result in the 2D and 3D view simultaneously. The envelope is a parametric object, so its representation in 2D will be a perimeter, while its properties tell us way more information, starting from the stratigraphy. By clicking on this tab, will be available two buttons. The first one that allows us to modify the stratigraphy, and the three dotted button that allows us to choose a different stratigraphy from our BIM object library. In the upper part, we have the different folders in which is divided the general library. We have, for example, the insulated rubble masonry, and we can also choose among different thickness, for example, 219 millimeters, or like in this case, 440 millimeters. And by clicking here, we just applied the stratigraphy to our wall. Now we can change the thickness even by clicking this three dotted button. So this operation will change the thickness wall in 300 millimeters. Here we have the variable thickness that allows us to change the two faces of the wall in polylines. So by activating this function, we can select the faces of the wall and modify the thickness in this way but we can also add some intermediate nodes by clicking with the right mouse button over the green line and by choosing add nodes. So we can have different shapes or by clicking again over the green line, we can also choose to convert in arc the side of the wall. As you can see, we made this modification from the 2D view, but you can see it dynamically also from the 3D view. Let's convert back the envelope in a wall with a constant thickness Start to analyze the scarp function. By clicking this button, we can change the vertical shape of the wall in a scarp wall. And we can choose in this section the base dimension of the wall. We can change this value from 400 to 300 millimeters, and we can also change the side of the scarp. Now disable this function and check the alignment. Coming back to the drawing, we can grab the first point and change the direction, or we can grab the green nodes in order to change the position of the wall. But we can also grab the blue arrow in order to change the length of the wall without changing the direction. This alignment can be modified by clicking on this button and double click on one of this point. But we can also change the alignment by clicking F5 or F6 function key. Here we have the classification section, which we can divide the walls in groups and typologies. That means we can define groups of walls that share the same properties. In the geometry section, we can choose among different shapes of walls, like in this case we have a rectangular wall and we can grab the blue dots in order to change the height of the wall. But we can modify the shapes by choosing a trapezoidal wall in which the two nodes become independent, so we can move each of them separately. Then we have the length of the wall, which can be modified on the 2D view, but also the 3D view and from the properties toolbox, just by typing directly the correct value. The same procedure can be applied to the height of the wall, so we can type in the value here, and from here we can define the height from the zero plan of the base of the wall. Now let's analyze the section of the geometry box in which we can modify the properties of the starting point and the end point. But how to identify the starting point, so P1, and the end point, P2. Let's have a look at the 2D view. We can see there is this black arrow which is pointing from the point 1 to the point 2. So why we need to know which is the point 1 and the point 2? For example, now we can modify the length of the wall by referring to the point 1. In this case 5 meters to the point 1 and we can also change the direction from here just keeping the point 1 in the same position and those are the coordinates of the point 1. We can apply the same concept to the point 2. We can change the length by keeping the same position of the point 2. Again we can change the direction of the wall for example if we type in a different angle and we can also change the position of the point 2 just by modifying the coordinates. The next box tells us information 
about the height reference system, which I already know from the tools menu here under the level manager, or from the drawing menu here at the bottom, or simply by right clicking on one level of the navigator. But here, from the properties section, we can decide on which level we want to set the upper or the lower side of the wall. We can also define the elevation of the upper or lower side of the wall, referred to the level, and eventually the sublevels, which we will discuss in further lesson. Here we have the function box, from which we can move the wall from a certain value, for example 1 meter on the x direction, or minus 1 meter in both the axes, or we can move the wall vertically, for example by typing 2 meters here. And as you can see here, in the geometry box, the elevation of the wall will be updated in 2 meters. And we can see the same value here in the height reference systems box. But let's move back the wall at the zero elevation. Here you can see the materials section, from which we can define the texture to be applied to all the faces of the wall. Then we have the drawing model sections, and the layers relating to our walls. Then the aspect section, which we can define the drawing colors. For example, in this case, I want to change from black to light blue, so as you can see, the color of the drawing is changed. We can also check the idea of the walls and the number of this envelope. And we can lock the entity so it can't be selected anymore. And if we want to select this wall now, we need to open the Select menu from here and choose Select Locked Entity. And then we need to uncheck the locked box here. Now, by clicking the F2 keys on the keyboard, we will fully open the 3D windows, and by clicking this button, we can choose to visualize or not the edge lines of the wall. Come back to a normal visualization, and let's have a look at the AFC box. As we already said before, Edificious is a BIM software certified by Smart Building both in IFC import and export. As you know, the IFC format contains a long list of variables. Some of them are wrote down directly by the software, like for example the geometry or the material of this object, while other variables can be added by the user. Just by clicking in this box, as you can see, will come up a list of variables from which we can choose the one we want to add. And here, at the very bottom, we can see the attachment box. From this box we can select any files to be attached to our drawing, maybe a JPEG or a PDF files, but we can also attach a link to an internet site. Then anytime we need to check these informations, we just have to click on this button and we can select and visualize the attachment. And now let's come back to the drawing stage. We already learned that in order to insert a wall we just need to click twice on the workspace or click a first time in order to insert a start point, then choose a direction, and then we can type in directly the length of the wall. We can also hold down the control key of the keyboard if we want to draw continuous multiple walls. Another drawing method is to use a DXF or a DWG CAD drawings as reference, but we can also use a 2D magnetic grid. Now let's see some other features of the envelopes. For example, let's draw again this envelope and let's intersect with this other one. So in this case this wall will be divided in two different parts, which we can edit separately. So for example we can modify the properties, the geometry, or even the position of this part of the wall. Now let's see another object. Just open the menu and select this icon, which represents the curved envelope. As well as the normal wall, you need to click the start point and an end point, but also you will need a third click in order to set the curvature. Now, by selecting this new object, we can see the properties toolbox is the same as the straight wall. The stratigraphy menu here brings us to the beam object library, which is actually the same as the straight wall. Then we can assign a variable thickness, a scarp, and eventually the alignment. What is quite different is this section here, which gives us information about the radius, the coordinates of the arc point. For example, we can change the coordinates of this point by opening the menu, changing this value maybe to minus 5 meters, and as you can see, the curvature of the wall is going to change slightly. Or we can also change the coordinates of the center of the curvature, moving the center on the x direction by minus 2 meters. We can also change the tangent of the point 1 and the point 2. 
like in this case I want to change it by 5 meters. All the other properties are the same of the straight wall. Now let's have a look at the other features of the envelope. So let's open the 3D view, select the wall and right click over the object. From this menu select add upper profile function. Now you can see this green line which is the upper edge of the wall and as seen before we can change the elevation of these nodes and if we click over this line we will see a menu with new options that we can also see from this menu on the toolbar. So for example we can add a node from here and change its elevations. We can add another node by right clicking over the green line or even by clicking the insert key of the keyboard. For each single segment we can have some modifications like for example we can convert a segment in arc. With the same procedure we can also modify the bottom profile of the wall. 